Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RHAP B&B for the preseason of Survivor 45. My name is Mike Bloom, and I am soaring higher than a drone in the air, showing a QR code for the first three minutes of Survivor 45's premiere, which is a thing. Check it out, people. We're recording this actually the morning after that stun spectacular happened, as we have a lot to get into. As the summer's onslaught of commercials have told us Survivor 45 is just a shot away at this point. And you're probably wondering, where can you give me shelter? Well, come no further than the RHAP b and &B, a Survivor Fun and Games podcast, where we just talk a lot of stupid stuff about Survivor each and every week. Of course, it is not just me, as I've asked voluminously in the preseason, every Survivor contestant must have a ride or die must have a number one. And this person at Ponderosa was giving me so many good vibes five plus years ago that we jumped on doing this podcast. And now we are entering double digit seasons on the b, &B. So happy to officially kick off our Survivor 45 coverage with one of the bees behind the b, &B the co-owner, Liana Boris. Liana, how are you? I'm doing well. Yes, that's actually our origin story. Mike saw me playing my Nintendo DS in the corner, and he was like, I got you. Yeah, and so, so I, had, I, I had my big afro, my Jufro, and you're like, mm -hmm. I've got good vibes from him. You were one of like the three people who didn't have that bad vibes from me. <laughs> Yeah, it was a small pool, so it was easy. Uh, no, th look, I can't believe we are back for Survivor. As you mentioned, double digits. We've been doing this now for so long, but it never, ever gets boring. Like, it always is so exciting when the cast drops, knowing that we have the preview, knowing that we're going to be able to talk through things together, prognosticate on everything that may or may not happen, be totally wrong. All of that is a good time. Yeah, so I want to talk about that a bit because it's been such an interesting experience following reality TV, social media, to say the least, over the course of the past few months. Because I would say before the beginning of September came around that much like the weather we're currently experiencing, things were a bit cold. I would argue that in the social media era of Survivor fandom, the audience may have had the lowest amount of buy-in I've ever seen on Survivor, and I wasn't entirely sure about why. I mean, season 44 was really high highs and low lows, not low low lows, but I do feel like there was a generally positive feeling about the ending, obviously a lot of understandable praise behind the cast. And then for whatever reason, it felt like when the summer hit, you know, people weren't necessarily talking about it anymore. And then when stuff started to get drummed up at the end of August, it seemed like a lot of people, mostly I think due to the format and perhaps the news about the structure of the season, of course, continuing this new era format, felt a bit out on it. Now, that being said, I have seen things come around a bit, both in the drop of the cast and, you know, the hype that's being amassed via my interviews, via other preseason materials, and the profuse amount of marketing for season 45 that we'll get into, that it does feel getting to that point that you said before, Liana, about how I do feel like there is a lot of anticipation around the premiere of 45 in mere days. But I'll admit, as a Survivor fan out on those streets, it felt like some cold breezes were passing through over the course of the majority of the summer. Also probably doesn't help that there was a, I wouldn't even say Survivor adjacent, outright Survivor contestant in Big Brother, as well as a couple Survivor adjacent contestants in Surrey. I think that diverted a lot of attention away Liana, I know you've been a bit away in various pursuits over your summer break. Is not Survivor. Don't worry, Liana. It's not playing. <laughs> There's still only one Liana who's ever played Survivor. But, like, have you been seeing the same things that I've been seeing over the past couple months? Yeah, it's actually really interesting that you bring that up because I have been so busy with work over the past few months. I've been away from the online sphere just in general. And so for me, I haven't really noticed that big of a difference because why well, I, I haven't been in it, except for when I started my prep, which may or may not have begun yesterday, but that's besides the point. Literally, uh, Liana, <laughs> better late than never. I say as someone who <laughs> yeah. put out like nine plus hours of podcasts and like 20 different articles in preparation for the season. <laughs> and that's the beauty of your content, Mike. It's just sitting there waiting for me when I'm ready to just jump on in and dig through it like a badger ready to go. I, uh, I felt like 
I don't know from the fans necessarily, like what the hype is like. You would probably have a better sense of that. But I can tell you what the survivor's social media is like. And by survivors, mm. I mean like the official survivor account, because I did prep for us the first casuals corner game. Of course. We love to tap in. We love to see what other people are thinking about the cast before we get started. And I felt like such little promotion for the new season on their social media. So typically they will post individual videos for every single cast. They post them on Twitter. They post them on Facebook. They've got them out there circulating as well as posts about the overall season as a whole. Like there's just a ton out there. And that was not really the case. I felt like they spent way more time promoting the 90 minute episodes and the buffs that were out on. <laughs> On like <laughs> roadside America esque landmarks throughout. The oh, United where States. was the buff on the largest ball of twine? <laughs> the largest ball of twine. <laughs> Okay, we're back, baby. Let's we're go. back. There we go. Never yeah. miss a step. <laughs> we'll come. All right, let's think. How many more puns can we think of? Uh, yeah, I. Who are exactly. we? Brando and Jay Maya. <laughs> no. 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 Uh. So anyway, so from from that perspective, those were the things that felt like were a bigger deal than really the season or the cast as a whole. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that says. I don't know if that's in a world where right now Big Brother is everywhere or just reality TV is coming more to the forefront as a result of the, the strikes that are going on. I don't know if all of those things factor in or kind of what's the motivation behind it, why it feels like there is less excitement than maybe in previous seasons. Well, I think what is contributing perhaps towards that, and I do think, again, it's been more ramped up. It could have just been a change in marketing tactics where we saw the uniform effort from the 44 cast when it dropped, uh, you know, with the copy pasta of I'm taking the plunge, then maybe they thought, okay, these contestants are obviously very much online with a couple mm -hmm. of exceptions even this season. We've got a couple of Rox Roys in amongst the moguls of this very young cast. But to say, okay, so maybe if we give it to them, they'll be able to sort of make hay while the sun shines. We don't necessarily need to work with that. But it also could be this idea that 45 is certainly a milestone, does not look nearly as, you know, round as 50, but still there's a lot of curves going on there. It's a thick number in a manner of speaking. But this idea of uh, that it's... What we're Sorry, I just, like, I just imagine that meme of someone going up to the Survivor 45 logo and be like, damn, boy, he thick. <laughs> I mean, listen, there's a lot of birds and I infamously called a pigeon a thick ass bird back yeah. in the day. So I think true. And there's plenty of me thought. I mean, these are what the pelicans on the logo that we're seeing mm -hmm. currently on the YouTube video. The yeah. Pelicans are like, they got that that dump truck, you know, <laughs> thick ass beak. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what Cisco was singing about. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why Austin was so afraid of Pelican Pete back in the day. He's like, damn, See? that badonka donk. See, <laughs> makes me want to quit the game. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but I think that I cannot believe this got us on track. But this this idea that it's 45, I think it could be considered certainly a milestone, just like as a pure number. And the fact of the matter is we're going sort of dirty 30 route with it, right? Back in 2015, when asked about the cast of Survivor 30, Jeff had replied, I talked with Mark Burnett and we considered it, yes, it's season 30, but it's only our 30th season. Mm. And so they decided instead to go with an all newbie cast rather than some sort of like big milestone celebration like they did for 20, as an example. Now they did end up doing that the very next season for Cambodia with like 30 seasons to look back on. That seems to be the case here as well, as well where uh, at the time we are talking, I do have an interview coming out uh, in the next day or so with one Jeff Probst. I had the great opportunity to speak with him and I did ask him about this. And to give a bit of a tease for the interview, he outright said that like, they had no consideration of making this a returning season. Maybe it's because their eyes are already looking ahead to the more curvilicious 50, but they were saying like, no, we like what we have so far with the new era. We're already looking ahead to like a big returning season at that milestone. So why do we feel like we have to do a sort of like halfway check-in with another returning season? And so mm -hmm. perhaps some of that as well, which again, figures into what I've been talking about previously, is this idea that people are saying, 
okay, it's season 45, but it's our 45th season in a manner of speaking that like, we're not necessarily doing anything out of the box, considering all the other stuff we've gotten in the new era, at least what's been presented to us. It's still 18 new castaways. It's still going to be probably the relatively the same structure that we're used to, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I'm kind of okay with that. I actually, mm. I feel like when you're, which survivor is sort of reinventing what it is that they're, they're trying to create as a product. They've really only had two shots at it. I mean, I understand that there's small variations that you can make in between the two seasons, but the fact that like 41, 42 film back to back, 43, 44 film back to back, you sort of only have, that's really only two shots at figuring it out um, with some minor adjustments in between. So if they want to have another, another go round at this, I think that that's okay. I mean, I know I saw some comments in the casual sphere that was like, oh, great. It's another six, you know, people in three groups. Great. How exciting. I don't know. That doesn't bother me as much. I think again, you and I are both about the characters and the personal stories that are being told. And so for me, the format doesn't really make that big of a difference because I'm just so interested in getting to know the people that are on the show. Yeah. And I totally agree. And I will continue to beat this drum and perhaps it's a bit self-servingly because again, I have this incredible amount of content in the preseason about these people, but I actually do feel like these people rise off the page like Jay and Maya did when she was reading her beloved fantasy stories back in the day before making them a reality. I do think once you actually get to know this cast, it's not necessarily the cookie cutter types than you may anticipate when even just looking at a typical new era survivor sees it. I mean, Listen, I know that uh, base judgments from the internet in particular only go about an inch thick, but God, I just feel for anybody who has poor eyesight going on to Survivor because you could be a Hall of Fame quarterback, but apparently if you wear glasses on Survivor, the internet will point at you and call you a nerd and that you are no different (laughs) from every other person wearing glasses in their cast photo. Nerd! (laughs) Yeah, you're Homer Simpson shouting out of the car. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I shouldn't admit this, but I'm going to. As someone who also will see people and immediately make base judgments, as we we do, we're humans. Yeah, Listen, I asked human. them a question. There's, there's an entire thing to the point that we quoted in our uh, intro here about like base judgments that these people made about each other in the preseason. It's humanity in a nutshell. Yeah, exactly. What I think is important is then. Okay, yes, I had this initial judgment. Let's not let it impact how I'm going to treat or think as I get to know this person, right? And I think that someone, I'm just going to say it, like Drew, for example, who has that, you know, you immediately see him. You, What were all the names for him? Napoleon Dynamite. Dynamite you know? Lanky Blanky. Lanky Dwe- Blanky. Dweeb City. <laughs> yeah, which, I'm sorry, those are like pretty funny. Uh, Anyway, as soon as I heard his interview, I was like, oh, <laughs> Okay. I was really interested in getting to know him. And I think that he was someone who had a lot of charisma, someone who, when you look at someone who looks like the he does, you just don't think those things about him. I was like, oh, that's, this is why you were cast. Someone like him, someone like Jake. There were a lot of people as I went through the interviews that as I heard more and more from them, I was sort of more and more intrigued. Yeah, and that I was, totally agree. That was my overall opinion on this cast, that at first I kind of like scrolled through him and I was like, eh. And then as I got to know them a little bit more, I was like, ah. <laughs> exactly. Those are the onomatopoeias you have to associate with it. I think that's yeah. where we're going to eventually go in Survivor, where Jeff's no longer asking for metaphors or analogies. It's just going to be like, sum up this situation in a sound. <laughs> exactly. If you had to pick one sound to describe how you're feeling right now, what would it be? Oh, I should totally ask that for 47. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you should not. <laughs> Although it would give a lot of really great clips. Like, uh, yeah, Ponderosa got me feeling like, huh? I think so. I mean, I think that's a good way to sum up this cast. Uh, So I do think that it's going to lay a lot of groundwork for what we're about to experience with this cast as well. It's a really interesting group with like a various spanning of personalities with, you know, all the love for the cast of 41 and 43. I think one of the conventions from Survivor fans in this new era is like, okay, odd number seasons are the Dr. <laughs> Jekyll buttoned up, a little bit more normal and grounded. 
42 yeah. and 44 is like the Mr. Hyde. It's like the straight up wild, chaotic characters all thrown into one group together. Here, I feel like it's a little bit of half and half. We'll get into it a bit more, especially in the, the first game that we're going to do. But I do feel like, especially for an odd number season in the new era, we've got some more freaks in there. And again, as a podcast that like soaks up every ounce of sunlight that the freaks offer, I think that's why we had a lot of fun twist stuff aside in 44 mm -hmm. in particular. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this group as well. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And I think that... As we start to get a little bit more into the weeds and get to know them, I think it's going to be much more interesting because when I started to think and predict concretely how these players are going to do and how they're going to interact with one another, I got almost more and more confused because I felt like, I don't know, this could go so many different directions. And I think that that wide openness is also what makes me really excited for a survivor season because uh, look, you look at someone like Jam Jam and you're just like, this charismatic force is either going to be voted out at fifth place for being too charismatic or he's going to win. Like those are the only two options for someone like him, it feels like. And so because of having a better handle on how I thought that that cast 44 was going to perform, it was still fun. Don't get me wrong, but it felt like less of a mystery that was unfolding as the, the season played out. And that's what I have that feeling for 45. Well, speaking of mystery, I will say when it comes to the production of this season, because again, I think a lot of people had some praise lauded on to 44 in the moment, but I think something that a lot of fans were on the same page with was a lot of, I would say, questionable things that were done between the birdcage while being a fun thing to have like a public idol, had the fake idols, and while it was fun to point and laugh, you know, uh, Malcolm style at the screen when people like Jamie and Big Dick Blankenship had fake idols that they didn't know were fake idols. It did feel mm -hmm. inherently unfair. You had the one for one for one swap, which felt like kind of a half measure of a tribe swap. You had the absolute to like put it nicely shit show that was Matt's boot episode with everything going on there. <laughs> and this is something we talked about in the moment was like, okay, all that happened but 44 was such a well-received season to the point that it got the show nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Reality Competition Show for the first time in 17 years. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Put yourself in the head of Jeff Probst. Before you ask the contestants what sound represents their experience, what lessons do you think they're taking from 44? Are they saying, okay, we went too far. We know our limits. Now let's walk it back. Or are they looking at it from a more results-oriented perspective and saying, look at the wild season all this stuff produced. We should keep it moving forward. I have a feeling like the latter is going to be the takeaway, right? Which is, oh, wow. Yeah, that went so well. Everybody loved all of these wacky things that we did that put people in these unexpected situations. And that's why we ultimately got the result that we did. That is what I could imagine the takeaway being instead of like, this is a super fun cast. But it's interesting as you went back and and reminded me of all of those things, I have blacked most of those out of my memory. I was like, yeah, 44 was just so fun. And like, oh, I didn't remember all the shenanigans or yeah, the bandit with the X that Carolyn had done. But that again is an example of a player doing something fun, not necessarily the mechanic. But I could see them really throwing in in this season. Let's try this. Let's see what this is like as they workshop through the all the the almost like next level of mechanics because there's kind of like the base level of mechanics, which is like how many tribes, how many people. Then you kind of go the next level up, which is the idols or the shipwreck island or those kinds mm -hmm. of things. And I feel like that's the level that they're really working at changing because that's what we've seen the most changes in through 41 to, to now. So I could see the takeaway being let's work on those to try to keep amping those up. Mm, yeah. It'd be interesting because what's also unique about this cast is that they have seen through at the very latest the Josh mergatory boot episode. Mm. They did not know what was, what was about to be brought onto the game with everything to do with the Matt boot. So mm -hmm. it is feasible that the show looked at all the drama around that, about the lovers torn apart of Franny, just even bringing Matt's back to tribal council, she wouldn't be able to give him the shot in the dark and like the tragedy that befell this incredibly nice person 
in Matt mm-hmm. Blankenship. It's possible they looked at the drama that resulted from that and said, listen, these people don't know what's coming. Maybe we'll do it again. That also yeah. being said, I know some people feel like that was sort of like a last minute thing brought on because of the Bruce metafact, which like knock on all the wood, hopefully we won't get again because there is a second chance of that happening in many ways. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they take moving forward. I do think the toothpaste is a bit out of the tube with the fake idols thing. Mm-hmm. I feel a lot for these players in 45 moving forward that like you are starved to skeletal qualities your brain is reeling with so many possibilities and you think you find your savior in this little trinket in the jungle but now you have to pile something else on of well wait a minute this might not even be real production might have actually given me a fake idol or someone else might have made a fake idol using those materials and like Mm -hmm. i feel like that would make my mental capacity hit critical mass let alone all these other people's you know, that's it. As you mentioned that the fake, okay, maybe not the fake idol thing specifically, but the question that you asked in all your interviews about who would you want to go on the boat, the boat, the boat shows up. Are you going to go? How are you going to go about that? That question, right? It was so interesting to hear so many people be like, uh-uh, 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 yeah. uh-uh. like I am not touching that at all whatsoever. I think it was what only Bruce who's like, yeah, whatever yeah bruce said yeah (laughs) sifu said yes but like i'm gonna try to make it seem like not my idea and austin was like yeah if they'll let me i want to go because basically i know i'm not going getting voted out primer so i might as well have an idol he's like yeah i'm too strong you're not getting rid of me uh right okay so yeah so there are people right who are willing to do that but the majority had this immediate gut reaction of like please no don't send me on that boat and i think that that in part is a reflection of all of the dangers that come with it's the dangerous <laughs> it's, it's the monster though those types of things are clearly having a really strong impact on what players want to do and i don't think that that if you're a producer you want people going for these things right like you don't want people being like eh, i'm not touching it <laughs> like, yeah if oh i see a beware advantage i can't remember who it was in their interview who was like i'm going back grabbing someone else and making them open it yeah like, that was i know i know that. brandon at least said it i think maybe another person said it as well i know kelly very much had the attitude of like well uh it's not usually the people who go on journeys that are in danger but like their closest ally so like i gotta make sure whoever goes is neither myself nor yeah. a friend of myself <laughs> Yeah, there's all of these layers now that players are having to think about when it comes to dealing with these advantages that aren't related necessarily to the mechanic of the advantage itself. It is almost just about all of the possible unknown dangers that could come from it. And I just wonder if that's going to end up with a cast that's playing, you know, scared, but understandably so as a result of, well, it's almost like a bear trap. You're going to stick your hand in it and it's going to clamp down on you. To that point, you mentioned the monster. I'm so happy you did. Is the monster domesticated to this point? Like the Mm. first two seasons, it was wild and out. And then like Caesar Milan came onto the island and was able to calm it down. And now like three years in, our monster's getting on great. Is he the cat guy? Uh, he's the dog person oh he's the dog guy okay there's a is there uh, there's, a cat guy there's Peter a cat Milan? guy that came across that came across Pui and i are watching tiktoks together and he came across Puya's for you page and it was so funny the way they had edited it because it was like the guy the, the cat guy cat whisperer or whatever but then they would edit the cat to make it look scarier than it was right because it's just like <laughs> it's a cat so the cat they would edit it and they would edit it like slow motion with the like panning like like kind of thing like as it's hissing at the guy anyway that's not important right now okay um so, so the uh, monster <laughs> well no so i i googled first off i googled cat caesar milan and i was very nervous about my algorithm so far so good <laughs> okay. i think i found the name yes. liana i will give you three guesses <laughs> as to what the name of this man is it's something ridiculous isn't it like hector moonstruck or something like that you are incredibly close so i will give it to you oh. Yes. Jackson Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Do you think that's his real name or his stage name? Oh, my God. I mean, I would imagine if he's a bit of, like, a flower child, like, if his mm. parents who drove around the country living in a van like Kendra, like, it feels like Kendra would name her child Jackson Galaxy. Jackson I think she has, Galaxy. That t- she has that type of energy. <laughs> yes, it is this guy, because I remember being obsessed with his facial hair. Did you did you see it with the triangles? Yeah, yeah it's like very sculpted <laughs> beard. 
Yeah, this guy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like the David Ew. Blaine of Pat Whisper. But he has so many different looks, but I hate the one, yeah, where he has the sideburns, but also cut off <laughs> from the beard, but he's also bald. So yes. it almost feels like, I don't know, like the Pangea that was his facial hair <laughs> underwent continental shift. <laughs> yeah, they like separated and like moved <laughs> the trend of his face. Here is evidence that the eye, the eye, the 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 sideburns were once connected to the beard. <laughs> yeah, originally it was Pangea before. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um anyway, okay, so land bridge to Asia aside. <laughs> I, I think I that... can see the beard from my sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sarah Cat Palin. Um okay, wait, what Sarah Perlin, please. With Sarah Perlin. <laughs> oh, please, uh, nobody named that cat. Oh, the monster, the monster. <laughs> Oh, the monster, the monster. Can you play. tell we haven't, like, we did a big brother, but we really haven't done this in, like, months and months that, like, there is no path. We are survivor players cutting through the underbrush trying to clear a campsite for ourselves. I love the idea when, yeah, and the survivor player's like, this is what I prep for. This is what I listen to. Mike and I were joking, like, you should absolutely not listen to the B&B. It's going to be even worse for you. You will you learn do. less <laughs> about Survivor by listening to us. Okay, but you will know about Jackson Galaxy, which, in my opinion, is a fantastic conversation starter. Okay. Will that be your, that be your celebrity loved one, Jackson Galaxy? Yeah. <laughs> I've thought whenever I listen to the interviews, I always think about what my answer would be to you. And of course, it's never going to be a serious answer. And I think like what your origin story with Survivor is, I think my answer would be, I've never actually seen an episode. I've only read the Wikipedia articles. I To me, that's a hilarious answer. So I think of that every time. Anyway, monster domesticated. Yes. What does that mean? Okay. What does it mean that the monster would be domesticated? Uh, okay. What did Jeff say about the monster? He said that the monster was like, it's danger, but the fun kind. Mm -hmm. So is the question, is there still danger? Maybe with all the medivacs, they're like, no more danger. <laughs> no yeah. more monster. <laughs> Padded everything. I mean, yeah, to that point was like the last example of the monster when Matthew climbed that rock. And they're like, so much got ruined because of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Monster, your wild side is over. Okay. The, <laughs> the, the, the honeymoon phase is done. You're settled in right now. Things will get a little less freaky. Maybe won't be every night or maybe every week, but like you have a nice blissful existence at the moment. Yes, exactly. Like, can we all just stay on the beach, on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> no one go anywhere. No one go above sea level, please. That's the new rule. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, you can only yeah, you can only go two feet above sea level. <laughs> That'd be a <laughs> wild restriction of like, listen, if you jump. It better be a no short jumping. distance or you're getting DQ'd. Exactly. I mean, we can't have people breaking ankles out here. I'm, I mean, I, obviously, you never want a medivac, right? Uh, so I'm okay if there are restrictions that prevent people from, from getting injured. I have no problem with that. Give them all the concussion helmets at the beginning. I'm fine. Could you imagine if they walked <laughs> around with those padded helmets the entire 26 days? <laughs> I'm just imagining them in those padded helmets and like, elbow pads <laughs> yeah gotta protect the bows baby <laughs> yeah uh yeah. elbow pads knee pads maybe the little wrist guard things that you, you yeah wear. i mean it'd be great though because then it'd be an easy excuse to like write your name on the side of your helmet so that everyone included the audience knows who you are oh my god and then everyone you vote out you can put like a little check mark or whatever <laughs> like to like mark your kills <laughs> um not, I mean, okay, you know, you know what I mean. But like, isn't that like a thing? Is that a thing? I mean, are you talking about like Arya Stark and her list? Like that you instead that would imply instead you make a list of everybody else. Or no, you're talking about like the Eric Killmonger. Like, let me put a hash mark for every yeah. scalp I claim for all my enemy. Yeah, exactly. I think the original. Well, the the original thing I was thinking about was like the don't college player football players have like stickers on their helmet for like oh. all the awards or whatever that they get so it could be something oh, like that but like merit badges yeah yes oh that'd be cute they have their little like boy scout girl scout little vests on and then oh like... those things would be in tatters by the end of 26 <laughs> days remember when carolyn accidentally burnt her pants in the fire like those things are gonna absolutely have to be made flame retardant well i was gonna say i think they're just made of plastic so they're going up in flames like that well let's see who may or may not be going up in flames with this cast now as liana 
mention if you are new to this in the preseason, which is still oncoming, Leon and I are going to be doing our write-ups as to how we think each of the eight contestants is going to do from our winner pick all the way to the first boot. We are mm-hmm. going to lock that away in the not Disney vault. And then every week, once that person is eliminated, we are going to open up said vault and read out our preseason predictions, usually in hilarious fashion about how wrong we were. But let's filter our discussion about this cast through a very different lens, something we've been doing since the very beginning. Now, I would say we're going back to survivor school, but looking at this cast, a lot of them have experienced very recent educational accolades. Some of them Mm -hmm. even were still in grad school at the time they were playing. So it's not too dissimilar of an experience for them. We're going to talk about some survivor superlatives here. So we came up with a list of superlatives. Uh, We are going to go through them, each give our takes as to who we best think is going to fulfill that, and then use that as a jumping off point to, I think, talk about this cast a bit further. Now, let's talk about a tried and true thing, much like the monster that has remained consistent throughout the Survivor new era, the personal segment. We got a bit of it less in Survivor 44, the photo-based package from home, the tragic backstories, if Mm -hmm. you will. Liana, out of these 18 people, who do you think is most likely to get a personal segment on Survivor 45? The first person who popped into my head was Sean. Mm. To me, I think... And maybe you can actually help me understand him as a player, because when I listened to his interview, I got so much of his background and his personal story. But the only thing I really know about him is like, he is the biggest ball of sunshine I've ever seen in my entire life. Like he seems so sweet, so cute, so kind, so caring. And that's really all I know about him. Mm -hmm. But he has such an interesting backstory. I mean, traumatic for sure. The fact that growing up in a Mormon household and going through conversion therapy and all of those types of things, like, oh my gosh, that is like, I can't even imagine growing up in a household that doesn't support you in that way of who you actually are at your core. And that to me is a really interesting backstory. I really hope that we get to see it on the show. I just don't know how he's going to play. And I think that that's going to be a common theme when we talk about all these people is that I just don't have a sense of how they're going to play. All I know, like I said, ball of sunshine. Yeah, it's tough because he was definitely one of the players that came in and had the very loosest plans as to what he was going to do. He purposely was vague in, Mm -hmm. okay, there's no one I'm looking at one way or the other in Ponderosa. You know, how am I going to be perceived? I'm not entirely sure. Like he was very up in the air with a lot of things. And I think that's because he has this like experience taking in so many different people's perspectives. And perhaps a bit of it is also influenced by the fact that like he knows he is going to be on national television and can't really reflect judgingly, considering mm-hmm. that he is in such a position of authority within a school melding minds at such a young age. So I do think he is really coming in with this attitude of like, yeah, I deal with so many things I have to do. So many kids are puking on a daily basis that all I need is a bag of sawdust and I can pretty much clean up any mess that comes my way. (laughs) That's what I was thinking. He's got his little spill kit out there. Yeah. (laughs) Going to town. (laughs) I really think so. And so I think granted it didn't necessarily make for the most specific answers. And I think more so his sense of self to your point came across through this like absolutely incredible energy, but I don't think he was necessarily hiding anything. I truly imagine he's going in there with this idea of like, My day-to-day is all about taking things as they come. Why stop now? Mm -hmm. Well, and he's the one also who has like a doctor. He just finished his doctorate Doctorate in human human connection connection or something like that. And again, I was just like, tell me more. Tell me more. I want to know more. I tell me more about you. And when I go back and I look at people who are able to be successful on Survivor, it's so much about human connection. And I'm like, well, if you have a PhD, you must be an expert, right? I would imagine so. Though I wonder, like, what was the doctorate? Does he have to, like, do the Mr. Beast thing of, like, I went out and shook the hands of 100 people and this is what happened to me? I wonder, yeah, exactly. There's, like, a practical exam in yeah. addition to the defense where I was it's just like... Saying, yeah, Liana, you were the one of the two of us on this panel who has a PhD, so you would understand the process more than not me. <laughs> That's the thing. It's all, it's a philosophy. It's a doctor of philosophy. It's literally 
all philo- it's like generation of new ideas. It's not really the practical exam that you would see for, you know, nurses or doctors. And, and so, but, but he's so such a ball of sunshine and so fun and so much energy. So I'm like, well, you must naturally be good at that. And having the background that you have had must also prepare you. So he, he was one of the ones that stood out to me of just, this is just a fascinating person that I want to get to know more. So similar to that ball of sunshine, let me go to the Tatooine-esque twin son in the Survivor 45 galaxy. My pick for most likely to get a personal segment, give me Julie Alley. Uh, I think Julie has this really interesting story of starting her life over four decades in. Uh, This idea, and just by pure happenstance, it is still wild to me that this woman was like experiencing arbitration for her divorce And due to an errant comment by probably a face-blind law associate of just being like, oh, I thought you were someone who worked here. Mm -hmm. She absolutely dovetailed her life in a completely different direction. And I do feel like this season, as well as last season a bit, we have steered away a bit from like that consistent complaint we have gotten from people, including uh, certain hosts on this network of like, oh, to get on Survivor, all you need is a tragic backstory. Like, I think we have seen less of those, less of the American Idol, America's Got Talent pre-packaged sob stories. Mm -hmm. Uh, Julia, I think it's still a bit veering into that camp, but like between just the incredible attitude that she possesses, along with her absolutely passionate, fascinating way she has of just saying the most mundane things, I feel like we got to get that on there. To change your life in that way takes so much energy and motivation and drive and determination. And the fact that she was able to do it with, you know, with kids going through the divorce, as you mentioned, completely changing her profession. That is so, so fascinating to me. And she's like running half marathons and doing all of these other activities that require time and energy and dedication. And so when I look at her as a person, I think, man, you are someone who is so driven. And that is I, absolutely endearing to me. <laughs> I I love people who are like this. She stood out to me immediately as I went through the cast and was listening to the bios. I don't know how well she's going to do, but I kind of hope so. I think I'm higher on her than a lot of other people when I talk to others about the cast and how they think yeah. people are going to do. I don't know what it is about her, but I just feel like that power to direct and to drive your game in a season that some of the other players maybe want to play more passively, understandably so, she could actually kind of take control and have that get her at least deep in the game. Now, is she going to be the too tall poppy that gets her head cut off? Entirely possible. No, that's true. Drew is by far the tallest poppy in the cast. So tall. (laughs) Is she going to stand out too much and not be able to make connections with people on her tribe? I just think she's going to eat up these kids. (laughs) Yeah, listen, I said it on the podcast with Rob as well. For me, it's day three or final three. I think she really is that alpha or omega player. And I think despite the fact that she is considerably older than everyone on her tribe, I think that could actually work in her favor here. Mm -hmm. Where I think while she does feel like her demographic might get targeted early, I do not think she is the weakest person on this tribe, which is usually a reason why this archetype gets voted out early. To your point, does it result in a win? Now, the new era has surprised us in all the types of people that can win in comparison to what came beforehand. I still think there is an unfortunate, uh, perhaps, check in our football helmet or merit badge as to, like, the mom type actually winning a season. It still feels like a bridge we haven't really crossed since the days of Denise and Sarah Lucina. But, listen, I, I think she can be both mom and mother here Mm -hmm. uh which is interesting because you you mentioned about like oh she could take the reins of the tribe she was one of the people that was very much coming in with this hot take of like i don't need to risk everything uh so it's even less so about like her being scared of things and Mm -hmm. more so about almost like you know the way that people were like in ghost island when like kellen uh was in a five to four vote on her tribe and she's like oh great i'm not gonna risk my vote i'm not gonna take a chance at an advantage here because like Mm -hmm. i don't want to risk the numbers i think she very much is coming in with that attitude of like i have lived so many lives over the course of my existence why would i just want to risk it all because yolo Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. And that is a slight difference in attitude that I think tells me a lot about her. That it, again, is someone who is working from this place of, I am trying to play in a way that gets me to the end, that is the best way possible, that is not, that is just like in coming so intrinsically from herself of like, yeah, this is what is best for me. This is what I'm going to do. And I look at her tribe, especially her being someone who, yes, is on the older side compared to the average of this tribe as well yeah, as old, the oldest cast. contestant this season. Yes. But she, she is athletic. She looks strong. I think her, I think Sifu, I think Austin, like those sort of more of the challenge beast kind of side people on that tribe. I could see that being a group of three that wants to work together. And especially if Austin is saying like, look, I know you need strength. You're not going to vote me out. He's probably someone who might value strength. And so keeping people around as long as she can accurately communicate that she is, has that strength. That's really, I think all that matters, but I just, I can't imagine them going to, I mean, they might hit one or two tribals, but I just don't Mm. think they have enough strength that hopefully they will be able to not go all that often early. Well, that perfectly sets up my pick for our next superlative, which is most likely to get a purple edit. Mm. And I'm sticking with this red tribe. Uh, Red is a component of purple, so I suppose it makes sense. I went with D here and d yeah. seems incredibly sweet sweet d i had a really great chat with her her casting story that was put out in adult and ross piece i think was very interesting as well i do think from a personality standpoint there's a much bigger characters that exist even on her own tribe i think she's mm-hmm. one of the most normal people on the season and especially on that red tribe she is surrounded by five big characters and the fact of the matter is to your point i think reba much like its time slot on the WB back in the day, is going to win out a lot. And so I could see a perspective almost like what we saw with Erica back in the day and Heather of, okay, this tribe isn't really going to tribal a lot, so we're not going to show too much of them. If we do, it's going to be the bare essentials, who's finding advantages, who's making relationships, etc. And I do feel like D might get the short end of the stick in terms of that content. I could see that. I She was someone who also faded a little bit into the background after I had listened to all the interviews. And if I was going to go through and list people, she wasn't someone who sort of immediately came to mind. Um, And I don't know if part of that is because like, I did like some of her answers. I liked Mm -hmm. the answer of, you know, starting your own business and having to work with a business partner, like to be able to intimately work with another person who may have alternate views than you. I think that is such an invaluable skill because so often we work with people on more of a superficial level where you never really have to dig down into the, no, seriously, we need to make a decision about this. You and I disagree. How do we go about solving that conflict? And so that I really liked from her, you know, she prepped making fire, she had CrossFit, like she did all of the right things. Um, and so I think that that gives her obviously a good platform to play the game, but in terms of the, how are you going to bond with people? How how are you really going to, like, I think you can work with people, but how are you going to create those initial bonds that get you to the level of being able to execute strategy that I just didn't necessarily get a, a sense of, which is such a weird, like little tiny thing to nitpick on. But I think is really important when you have to be able to come in and bond with people. Like what's the immediate thing you're going to bond with people over? Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a good question. What about for you? Who do you think is most likely to go purple? Okay, so for me, I went with someone who I hope does not end up being purple, but I'm nervous will for sort of the same reasons that you're saying. Now, uh, I <laughs> I was going to say, what color tribe are they? Are they, wait, what, red? Red is part of purple? Yeah, red is part red? of purple. Is Kelly uh, on red? Kelly's on blues, which is part okay, of purple. Blue is also part of purple. <laughs> Blue is part of purple and I picked I picked Kelly. I think that she's someone else who that I mean between Kendra and Bruce and Jake and Brando. Like I just think that she's somebody who is maybe going to fall a little bit to the back in terms yeah. of just getting a lot of content. Again, not that she's not interesting. I love the her similar actually to D in this idea of like, once you make a connection with someone being able to promote the shared vulnerability, those, those are the types of things that I really liked from her. I also like the fact that she said I would do anything to win. Yeah. 
That's really important to me. I just don't know if she's going to immediately jump out as this big character on the show. I could see a chance of her becoming like the narrator of the tribe mm. of like, if it's all these kooky characters and it consistently cuts to her being like, I don't understand. Why am I in an alliance with these people? I could see her be the oddest from that perspective. Maybe it's just because I made that winner comparison before, but I definitely agree. I actually had Brando in this category as well, perhaps for that reason mm. that like if he's not strategically involved and mm -hmm. i think while he certainly has like some very interesting quirks to him i think there are bigger characters that may take up more bellow airtime than brando which sucks because that means we don't get quality puns out of him brando is so interesting i the i we got to talk about the pranks yes okay. <laughs> The two pranks, and are there more? These are the two I remember. But Those the are two his two in the wheelhouse. <laughs> his classic Brando pranks. Putting pencils in someone's bag and telling someone a celebrity died. <laughs> Those are the two pranks. Get better pranks, Brando. Like, I will help you. As someone who is frequently pranking her coworkers, I will help you make better pranks. Don't get me wrong. The pencils one is actually kind of funny because I love the idea of just like, it's like yeah. adding one more nickel in the, like the office the phone. Yeah. The phone. Yeah. It's giving me those vibes. So I do, I do kind of like that one, but it's just like, oh, you per you prankster. You put on those pencils in my bag. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. And Rob tried to spin it as like, well, isn't that a good thing? I think it's more so confusing than it's good or bad of like, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's more just like this sort of minor annoyance <laughs> than it is anything else. I'm just worried that if that's an indication of a sense of humor, I get it. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. other people, maybe Bruce will get his sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Bruce said that they might not get my sense of humor. Could Brando experience the same thing of like, people don't understand the punked aspect that we're going on right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, yeah, exactly. That's what Aston Kutcher was going for. It was like, that was the first prank idea. Let's put a bunch of pencils in someone's bag. Yeah, after the season, Brando's gonna have to pen a letter, an op-ed yeah. being like, uh, this is why I need to be defended. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, look, he said he was a fan of the goofy moments. I yeah. love that as someone who's also a fan of the goofy moments. He he came across to me. I mean, I don't know he's 23. He's young, but he also came across to me as very young. Um, And so that's even though he says like, oh, the players under 25 last. I don't know, whatever his statistic was. Yeah, they basically like they outlast 50 percent of your typical survivor player. I believe basically anyone who's over the age that he made. Right. Sure. There's some statistical evidence that suggests that just because you're under 25, you can still have longevity in the game. Great. I agree. I think that that's fine. I just don't know if he's someone he just again, he didn't come across with sort of someone who is willing to really take take control when needed uh, and not saying that you have to have control the entire time. In fact, you probably shouldn't. But can you step up when absolutely necessary? He just came across as this like young kind of goofy, like fun guy that I would want to hang out with, not necessarily a cutthroat survivor player. Well, let's get to perhaps your pick for cutthroat survivor player. Liana most likely to flip on their number one ally become even more of a tradition, I think, in the new era. We nearly had Jam Jam doing it. We had Heidi attempting to do it last mm -hmm. season. Who do you think's taking that spot here? I don't feel good about this pick, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I said Kendra mm. because I was looking for people who played impulsively or would play impulsively. She was on my short list as well, so I think we're vibing here. Yeah, because she, oh, she is a lot. She has a yes. lot of energy. She's I super intense. She's got this big presence. She's tall. She's five foot ten. As she says, it's kind of crazy girl energy. And I love that for her. <laughs> I think that I I think again, I think she could actually do really well. Um, mm -hmm. and it's just a question of does that impulsive, chaotic energy lead her to just do random chaotic things or does it lead her to do gut feeling directed chaotic things? Like, yes, she's acting yeah. impulsively, but she's doing it because she has a solid rooted gut feeling that's telling her that her closest ally is betraying her. And I'm really hoping that it's the latter because I would, I want to see her play the game. 
No, it's a bit of apples and oranges, but like I look at Kendra and I look at this category and I can't help think of when Tyler convinced Caitlin in Big Brother 20 to vote out Steve and then backdoor Swaggy C. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like if that's if there is a person that can utilize those emotions that Kendra says, and not to say she doesn't have a good gut. I mean, she says that's followed her literally everywhere around the world and onto mm -hmm. Survivor. But I do feel like if the right person gets in her ear, she could be perhaps more easily swayed to do something drastic than somebody else. Exactly. And that would, that would, that's my concern is that you're acting in an impulsive way because of what other people are telling you, not because this is actually in your best interest because you feel it. So, yeah. Ooh, well, the yeah. other two people on my list besides Kendra, I went the Occam's razor route here and went with people who very much invoked names of some of the biggest flippers in Survivor history. So I'll put them in a tie right now. Uh, I will not be like Ghost Island and give two winners here. I said both Jake and Emily. I think okay. Jake has the Chris Doherty comparison. Chris Doherty flip, flip, flipped away uh, for a man of his you know, composition to the point where he had to profusely apologize to people in his final tribal council. And then listen... Emily, bring in that Chaos cast energy for the first time since Julie's original season. It's so highly needed, I think, in many ways. And so I think both of them, if they are intending to channel the energy of those previous players, it would make sense that they would be the most likely ones to do this. I'm obsessed with Emily. <laughs> I don't know why, but from the moment I heard the interview that you did with her, I was just like, Ah, <laughs> I'm fascinated by this person, mainly because I think, you know, she has this very just intense, determined life that I, I really, I really appreciate. She seems to have a really great sense of self. Of course, you guys talked about the fact that she can't lie, which might be, no, <laughs> that, that sticks with me. But I just, yeah, I don't know what it is about, about Emily that I, I very much vibed with. Uh, I don't know how she's going to do, but I, I want to see her try. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's a refreshing amount of candor, I would say, which yes, again, you could yeah. say about Cass is like, there is snark and we certainly have seen snark be delivered, but there was this like refreshing amount of honesty that Emily provided at both about other people and about herself mm -hmm. as well, being very upfront about like, all the shortcomings, which is so interesting because whether or not, you know, uh, you're casting intels from an outside source or not, certainly I think what people do in a lot of their interviews is really pump themselves up. It's like mm -hmm. a job interview when you're asked, my greatest weakness is that I have no weakness, essentially, mm -hmm. or I care too much. Uh, people try to spin it in that way because they want to get on the show and they want to believe that they have a chance to win. So it's nice to have someone like Emily come on and be like, yeah, here are all my foibles. My entire foot is essentially an Achilles heel at this point. Now, she does try to spin it in a direction of like, because I can't lie, I am so transparent that you're always going to know where I'm going to lie. But at the same time, it's so nice and relatable to have someone come up there. Uh, Brandon as well, I think, is a good example, too, of someone coming mm -hmm. on there just being like, yeah, listen, my shortcomings are vast, but hopefully I have some long comings that that's a phrase to make up for them. Yes, so we always talk about your long comings. I uh, <laughs> I think moving on uh, that it was also from a very like super just positive place, like fun positive place. So it's not like she was talking down. It didn't feel like oh you're talking negatively, like you're talking down. It was just mm -hmm. like yeah, this is just who I am, and this is part of 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 how I behave and what I do, and we're taking that in stride. <laughs> and that was just I, I love to see that attitude from players because it's being willing to acknowledge your shortcomings without constantly thinking about them about like ooh how's this going to hold me back? Ooh how's this going to impact me? And then sort of playing a scared game as a result of that. Jake, on the other hand, wow, he is a character. He was so fun to get to know in yeah. through listening to the interview. I just, I never would have pegged him as someone who's like, yeah, and I do theater with kids. They put on the Lion King. That's yeah, so and that, which is exactly the point that he's made that like you look at him and you think like, okay, here's a guy who just walked out of Cheers when yes. really he's giving three cheers for the Lion King. Yeah, and then he, I feel like he just like kept mentioning things that were, wait, what? I mean, he brought up Vanuatu, and which by the way, I think the comparison to Chris is, <laughs> is as you said, is really fun. Um, and it just, 
Yeah, it was just, it was very interesting to to see him because he's someone who you make that similar for me to Drew, where it's like, you kind of make that snap judgment of how you think that person's going to behave. And then you learn all these other things. So I'm hoping that that continues and that he can stay on the season enough that we get to know him. All right, let's move on here. Most likely to start a podcast. Now, I feel like this has become rarer as the new Mm -hmm. era has moved on. But again, as was mentioned before, this is a very social media Savai group. So it still is a possibility. I went with, I had Julie on my short list. Uh, Her podcast name is Enemy of a State because she is an estate (laughs) player. State Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I actually ended up going with Sifu because I feel like Sifu is such a big, boisterous personality. But he comes in from this martial arts perspective that I could see him having this like wellness podcast mm. about like pursuing through life in this manner of Tai Chi, about all the things that he's done as well, like all the various life experiences that he's had, despite the fact that he's only 30, you know, 10 plus years younger than Julie. But I just feel like he has that natural personality that would work really well alongside a co-host as they banter back and forth, probably about their favorite Dragon Ball Z episodes. Okay, yeah, I could see him starting kind of like a sort of fitness, health, and wellness podcast. Because yeah. the his story from like, because oh, he was one of the ones who, because a bunch of them lost weight, like a bunch of the contestants. Was he one of them? He wasn't, no. That was Brando, Brandon, and Jake, either inspired okay. by Survivor or in pursuit of going on to Survivor, lost a bunch of weight. Sifu's kind of like always been swole. Okay, well, th- those three people can be his guests on <laughs> this first couple episodes. Yeah. Um, but he was talking a lot about like, oh, I would work. I worked out a ton. Like, yeah. I think he said four, four, yeah, four times a day. I think he said. Yeah, and it was like, oh yeah, I'm burning an additional two hundred and forty, like two or twenty four hundred calories. Like, I assume in addition to his BMR. I'm like, oh my god, I'm exhausted just hearing you talk about that. Uh, but he, I, I. I'm interested to see him play because he yeah. really likes challenges and like that kind of stuff. And I don't know if it's just kind of like the the big sort of gym bro, like here to have a good time, but also like work hard and challenges. Um, I just don't know how far that's going to carry him in the game. Like giving me maybe Ryan vibes of going to be a workhorse and challenges mm-hmm. uh, and then early merge (laughs) kind of get voted out what about you what'd you say yes so i said caleb oh i don't know what the subject of the podcast is going to be but he just continues to spit between all the nicknames (laughs) hot geo beefcake whatever all the other ones lanky blanky never forget about lanky blanky can't forget yes johnny Johnny tsunami Tsunami. (laughs) (laughs) he just fascinated me yeah but also very much tall poppy i because everybody's looking at him he's making eye yeah. contact with everybody smiling at everybody that's gonna do great when he's courting people to be on his future podcast but is it going to work in the show but you can already hear where well i think i can't remember who said it maybe sifu who's like yeah he's like making eyes with everybody but i kind of want to work with him And I think that that's going to really help that even though, yes, people recognize him as being this big social threat, you still want to work with people that make you feel good. Even in the back of your head, if you're thinking like, oh, but they're making other people feel good. Yeah, but they make me feel good. (laughs) And that's going to help for him to stay around, I think. I just realized the way that Caleb described himself as the golden retriever that you let sit at the end of your bed. Is that what's happened to the monster? That it was raised by wolves and now it's been properly domesticated into a golden retriever. But I think he said, I'm still going to like eat your toes or whatever. <laughs> Not that, but you know what I mean? Like I'm at the foot of your bed, but I'm still going to, I'm like a yeah. wolf in sheep's clothing kind of, kind of vibes. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Well, let's mm-hmm. move on here. Most likely to have an advantage. Screw them over. I mean, as we talked about previously in this podcast, now more than ever, it is possible for this to happen to a person. Now, this is very hard to predict, but Liana, yeah. let's have you take a shot in the dark here. Who is most likely in this cast to get screwed over by an advantage? I usually just pick the people I like the most <laughs> because <laughs> inevitably when it happens, it's like, it's always my faves that will get yeah. screwed over. I don't know if that's actually true or not now, but it felt like that. So I'm going to go with Sabaya. Sabaya. Mm, Sabaya. Sabaya. 
that's what I thought. Okay. So she, again, I am so easy to please that Southern charm, her just sort of kind, but still like, I didn't feel like I was being placated when I mm -hmm. listened to her interview. It just felt like, okay, she's been watching from the beginning. She's got this really interesting backstory of being in the Marines, then becoming a truck driver. She's just so calming. And she also mentions things that indicate to me that she's aware of her situation. Like she says, I know how to placate the egos, right? Yep. Those are the things that she mentioned. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I love that. Which means you will get screwed over and go home. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because I think she is someone who can very easily get into a position of leadership on this hot mess Lulu tribe, the Delulu tribe. And I mm -hmm. think she could be someone who feels comfortable enough to like, find an advantage and then as a result i don't think her losing her vote in the pre-merge as much as she would hate to do that she told me right that like she wouldn't mm -hmm. go on the boat because of that like i don't think it'd be that big of a deal to her in the pre-merge but maybe it's a case where like someone uses knowledge as power and takes the advantage from her or something like that where mm -hmm. it still could be something that screws her over in the long term mm -hmm. yes and that is exactly why i am nervous for her uh, just because otherwise, I mean, I think she could win. I would vote for her. <laughs> so I went with, I guess to that point, I chose Bruce and I put in parentheses because mm. we can't have nice things. That it's almost like final destination of like, you've got this second <laughs> chance. You didn't get on the plane, but it'll come back around. It always comes back around. Right. Like this is just what's meant to happen, right? You keep yeah. trying. It's not going to happen. This is what the universe has in store for you. That's funny because I actually, <laughs> I put Bruce for the, our next one, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is the most likely to pass gas in an endurance challenge. Because when you interviewed Bruce, I went back and I looked at my old notes and it's simultaneously the same old Bruce, but with a new lease on life. Oh, like yeah. he's just everywhere. <laughs> He's ready to go. He's like, whatever, let's go. I don't care what other people think of me. We're going for it. And that's really fun. And that yeah. charisma, I think, could draw people to him. I mean, I always had a, a positive opinion about Bruce. I think the only my only nervousness was that he could rub people the wrong way. Yeah. But with his maybe more like less less rigid attitude, then that could do him good in the game. Yeah, I mean, it's like Bruce had basically like a near-death survivor experience, mm -hmm. and then he came back. And when some people experience that, they're like, I'm just going to appreciate things so much more. I'm going to wake up with the sunrise. You know, I'm going to tell my family members every day that I love them. And Bruce is like, no, nothing really matters at this point. I'm playing with house money. Y'all do yeah. whatever the hell I want to. Yeah, exactly. He is truly letting loose, which is why I thought he would let loose at uh let Bruce. I said let, let Bruce. loose, baby, let Bruce. <laughs> Brucey yeah, LaBrusa. I need to have <laughs> <laughs> that um to go back to the lulu tribe do you remember lulu and lala from the amazing oh, of course race I do, yes. okay so every time i see the lulu tribe i go lulu and lala tribe <laughs> god help them if they ever have to find what a hero is or figure out what it is that would yeah. be the one challenge they lose exactly i need a hero in more ways I, than one not for a hero Ugh. Well, let's talk about that next category. As you mentioned, the uh, the Danny Memorial Challenge. Mm -hmm. Who would be most likely to pass gas during an endurance challenge? I went in a bit of a different direction this time because the way that Danny do it was like actively calling attention mm -hmm. to it. it. was saying like, hey, Jeff, look what I can do. And then farted in the middle of a challenge <laughs> that he eventually lost. I went in a different direction that was more incidental. I went with our dear friend, Brandon Donlin. And all I put next to it was anxiety fart Oh, <laughs> of him just being so overwhelmed by the pressure in that moment that the pressure is exerted on his lower extremities and the fart comes out. Right. Like that's just, you can't control it. You know, yeah. your body going to body, it's going to do what it, what it wants to do. I love, I love Brandon. I've loved everything that I've seen from him in a lot of the preseason content. He's there's one video. Cause I watched these videos so much for casuals corner. He's like right. in a tree somehow. And it's just like his face in a tree. And he's just like, ah, like in the tree, that energy is so fun. Mm -hmm. I am so nervous. <laughs> so him. is he to be oh, fair. Boy. 
And that honestly is part of the reason why I'm nervous for him. Like as someone else who struggles with anxiety, I totally get it. I would be anxious out the wazoo, but you can smell that. Like the other players. No, that's the fart. uh, Oh, that's the fart. Yeah. Except when he lets, when he Bruce is loose. Um, (laughs) Sorry. I let Bruce. (laughs) It was a little little Bruce loose. Uh, Yeah. So anyway. Also, can someone please out there, please Photoshop Brucey La Brusa. Just Brucey it's just Le- Bruce in the Lucy Laduca famous like blonde bob. That big blonde wig. Yeah. <laughs> he I oh yeah, the whole thing. I'm a super fan. I'm gonna keep that hidden. Even I think it was Owen who actually commented on one of the videos of him saying that that was like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> like as speaking from experience, you can't help but want to talk about the show. And I am just nervous he's gonna have anxiety and overplay and like just do too many things and that will get him in hot water. Yeah. I think it's it's understandable. I think what happens with survivor, even in a shortened 26 day game though, is that like, I think if he's able to outlast the hot water, if the water is able to cool down to a respectable 72, Mm -hmm. uh, I think then he'll be able to be like, okay, I can manage this. Cause I totally agree. I mean, we saw this with Cochran in his first season Yes, this dude was like dragged along in a couple of votes in the aforementioned Savai, but like the fact of the matter is this was a guy that was very much in his own head from the very beginning and made it all the way to what eighth place, seventh mm-hmm. place. Like I could see a similar trajectory for Brandon where he could certainly be on the outs early on, but let's face it, this tribe is an absolute disaster walking from the jump. And so even if his plane, get, his plane gets blown shot to sunshine when he like immediately freaks out on the mat of like, I've been wanting to do this for 15 years. And everyone's like, okay, yeah, so much about your plan about lying that you were recruited yeah. from a taco stand or something. Mm-hmm. I think if he has enough time, I think he is really endearing. It sounds like from a couple of these, again, Ponderosa answers from other players that they do want to work with him as well. If he's able to get in good, he could be protected enough to supersede that anxiety that might put others and himself off. And that's what gives me a little bit more confidence is the fact that when they are all watching each other, he did get a lot of really positive feedback. Like that's Mm -hmm. a great start. So if you can sort of start from that and then just not overplay, then I think you're going to be in, in a really great spot. I think, you know, the ability to work with someone like Emily or Caleb, that kind of group, I think that could be a really safe place for him. It's just a matter of getting in with that, that group. All right. Our final category, and perhaps one of the hardest ones we've ever done because it is so predicated on the edit. Most likely to get a season-long foreshadowing edit. Of course, the consummate example being the consistent amount of times we saw Carson looking in the fire, standing near the fire, probably breathing in so much smoke that this man's life experience has been like winnowed down to half its amount. Of course, we knew, Liana, this is something you clocked early on. Okay, maybe Carson loses in fire. That's indeed what happened. Now, I don't think it'll be a one-for-one, but I went very simplistic on this i went with katora because Mm -hmm. tops is her last name and so i was like oh maybe it'll be like from top to bottom and she'll have a fall from grace (laughs) what (laughs) so her story of foreshadowing is just a play on her name but like what are they going to show for her her birth certificate Oh, yeah. Her social security card, her driver's yeah. license. Yeah, they're going to dox, the, dox Katora from the beginning. <laughs> you, know, you know when they ask for those photos, like, after the fact? It's going to be those, just a list of those. Or yeah, maybe take a picture of like, all your government IDs. Oh, or maybe it's, like, a shot always, like, down looking up at her, yeah. like, because she's on top. And yeah, then... it could be something where if she breaks the cardinal rule of post-44 Survivor and, like, climbs one of those mountains on the journey, she's standing from on top. I could see something <laughs> like that happen. <laughs> yeah or perhaps she goes from like a civil rights attorney to being on the defense all of a sudden ah okay interesting um okay i think that there's something that you can work with there unfortunately (laughs) some of it does require previous knowledge like you know the audience is really gonna have to know all those things about her are they gonna always listen if it's painted under her helmet it'll help exactly see exactly if they have it on because they'll have the last name on the side so it'll say tops the whole time yeah 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 
Um, okay. I also went simplistic. <laughs> I went with Jay Maya because Ooh. they could play the same little musical ditty each time. Like the shantham? Yes, exactly. Like a shantham, but it, it's like it has this crescendo and then like draw like da 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 da. Mm -hmm. at now the that's, end. that's interesting. <laughs> I did have her in a couple of other superlatives here. I had her on for personal segment because of obviously mm -hmm. talking about another life changing story of her deciding like Harvard Law was the path that was fated towards her. And much like the Greek heroes that she obsesses with, she defied fate and decided to become a singer. I also had her on for most likely to be purpled because I thought mm -hmm. that she would sing a lot to pass the time. And uh. while it's not Big Brother, they could still like. <laughs> just not put her in the edit because all she's doing is singing copyrighted songs. Exactly. They have no content of her like not humming a music a song that's copywritten. So yeah, that's possible actually. So that was the other piece of logic that I was using for her was the whole Greek mythology thing. Cause do you remember at tribal where there was the, the, the gargoyle, gargoyle? thing? Yeah. Of course yes. Jeff mined it uh, yes. last season. Yeah. Ah. So if they replace the statue, it could be something like a Medusa statue or It'll something It'll be a bird. Like It'll just be a bunch of bird statues. Okay. Well, <laughs> if it was Greek mythology, then you could tie that in as well. They could like show her and then show the Greek mythology bird statue. I mean, uh, I know that Rob and I did an exercise last season of like, okay, let's come up with a subtitle for each new era season. Even though we have yet to dive into 45, 45 subtitle is put a bird on it, right? Like there's, put there's a ring birds on it? everywhere. The no, song? like the, you ever see that sketch from Portlandia? Uh, no. Oh, you should watch it. It's very funny. Okay. That. And they're talking about the aesthetic and they're like, like, oh, uh, you know, need pillows to liven up the room? Put a bird on it. Uh, ah. Looking for a fascinator for your Kentucky Derby hat? Put a bird on it. I see. I thought it was like, if you like it, then you should have put a bird on it. <laughs> bird on, say? A bird what? parody uh -oh. artist? <laughs> tweet, tweet, tweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going for, but that makes more sense. Can someone please AI generate an image of the three single ladies dancers, but they're birds in the leotards? <laughs> And Bruce, Bruce, Ledu Bruce, and Bruce, La and Bruce, La Bruce is there talking about how many challenges he's won. Yeah. Imagine for the final three. I won five challenges. Yes, they were team reward challenges, but I've won them. Exactly. The mini challenge equivalent of Survivor. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> well, Liana, was there anyone else that was not mentioned in any of these superlatives that you wanted to highlight in particular? Anyone stick out to you from these preseason interviews? Oh, man. Let me see. What did we not talk about? Um, we didn't really touch on Austin all that much. Um, he's someone who I think is going to do extremely well. Like, yeah. I just feel yeah. like he's strong. He is social. He has some sense of strategy. Just overall good vibes. I just can't imagine him going anywhere, anytime. Yeah. So, and, and, yeah. Yeah, we have to require like a disaster of epic proportions. If he goes full JD of like putting himself forward, attempting to do too much too soon, I could possibly see it, but he has the advantage of having seen JD yeah. and knowing, mm -hmm. despite the fact that he's not nearly as young as him, like, okay, let me use that youthfulness as something to not put myself out there too much as like the guy controlling everything, which Austin is exactly. very aware of. Exactly. Uh, let's see. We talked about Hot Geo. We talked about... Uh, no, Hannah. We didn't touch on Hannah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Hannah? Yes. Puyo, Puyo said that I reminded him of Hannah. And I was like, yeah. do you know me? Because <laughs> I can see that. Um, I think that there's definitely some things that we may have in common. But to me the big like she's been through a lot i yeah. think the being able also to go from being a therapist recognizing that that is a lot that's a lot to deal with to then pivoting to managing your own practice i think that was super smart from her what i just got a little bit nervous about was again she like kendra felt like a player who's going to be super impulsive and then coupled that with the strategy that she says she wants to play which is letting other people take the wheel to me, those two things do not necessarily go together. Um, like, I feel like if you're an impulsive player, you want to be able to like 
act on those impulses. And so sitting back and like letting other people take the reins maybe don't necessarily go together. And especially this being the hot mess tribe, I'm nervous. I'm more nervous for Brandon than I am for Hannah. I think Hannah will will, will be able to hopefully integrate herself well. It's just that little small detail that makes me mm -hmm. a little bit be like, hmm, like, do you really have a sense of what's the best strategy for you as your person, Hannah? Well, interesting that you mentioned Hannah and Kendra being two sides of the same coin because Kendra was someone that stuck out to Hannah, right? In her Dalton yeah. Ross first impressions video, she said, much like Brando did in mine about how her choice to skip the escalators might spell her doom in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm. I, that was okay. Yes, that oh, that was what the thing about Hannah was. Was there were like moments where I was like, Ooh. okay, again to go back to the noises. There were moments where I was like, Ooh. and yeah. then there were moments where I was like, yeah. Then that was one thing was being able to really pay attention to what are people doing that puts them outside of of the scope, like paying attention mm -hmm. to other people's behaviors, being acutely aware of that. And that made me feel better about her. Also, I like the fact that she's 33. I think that's a good age to play Survivor. I'm back and forth on on uh, on Hannah. All right. Well, let's move on from what we think about these players to perhaps what the audience thinks. Even though, to your point, Liana, perhaps the thoughts may be less individually specific. But nonetheless, the casuals are in their corner. Yes, we're actually going to take a peek at a few different corners Oh, where the way that this game is designed. So as, as I mentioned, typically we go, you know, player by player and it's like, what player was this comment said about? Because we just don't have the wealth of, of content for this. We've changed, I've changed the game a little bit where now you have to pick what social media site this comment was said oh, on. Oh, that is so incredible. The same videos were posted on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So those are your three options, multiple Ooh. choice. I am going to read you, I have a total of nine comments we're gonna go through and you're gonna tell me, is it Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter? Okay. This is great. Cause I think, you know, these, lines i think have become a little less distinct as the seasons mm -hmm. have gone on something that i've remarked in a previous podcast is i feel like carolyn was sort of the one ring to rule them all last season where somehow she got every single site on her side by season's end so we're coming in from a very interesting perspective and now we get a first-hand test as to whether things are still incredibly distinct between all three sites exactly let's start with your first comment okay Bruce's red flag. He dives headfirst into any situation. Laughing face emoji. All jokes aside, I'm happy he's getting a second chance. Ooh, okay. So there's hope. There's positivity. That doesn't discount Facebook, though, because <laughs> I think that Facebook okay. takes a little while before they get, like, incredibly negative I'm going to go with, I feel like the use of emoji, I usually really look towards Instagram mm -hmm. for that. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the the pictorial aspect sort of inspires this visual element of, okay, I get to use as many pictures as I want to. I'm going to say it's Instagram. You are correct. Yes, that is from Instagram, from the Red Flags video. Before we talk about Bruce, I actually want to read comment number two. Okay, oh, so no. let's think about comment number two. No, 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 no. Glad Bruce is back. I hope he remembers to duck this time. <laughs> this man is never going to live that down. Even if he goes on to win the damn season, <laughs> this is what he'll be remembered for. That is correct. I will say, ooh, that, that feels Facebook to me. <laughs> yes, you're correct. That was Facebook. And I will say that did seem to be a common denominator. There were mm -hmm. very, very few comments that were not excited for Bruce to be back. Like, it was either I would just hear nothing, see nothing, or people would be like, oh, I'm excited that Bruce is getting a second chance, and then some joke about him hitting his head. So yeah. it was like a bunch of combinations of that, really sort of across all platforms, with a few kind of like, oh, he already got a chance, well, whatever. But yeah, but most like, what did they have to go off of? He lasted 12 hours exactly. in the game. Like, the endurance challenge from Survivor Palau lasted nearly as long as Bruce did in Survivor 44. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Like what? I mean, he, yes, his leg up is, I guess, the experience at Ponderosa and the marooning, <laughs> I suppose. And then that's it. Like, yeah, he deserves a second chance. Let's move on to our next comment. So it is, wow, 
all young gums. Young? Okay, so clearly they were trying to say young guns, <laughs> and whether they mistyped it or autocorrect reared its ugly head, uh -huh. they instead wrote young gums <laughs> which i think is also applicable they're not technically wrong because our teeth age as we do i suppose unless someone got a gum replacement yeah our gum tissue <laughs> young yes. gums oh uh, gum. you know what i'm gonna go with twitter because the lack of an edit button allowed people to pursue with bad spellings <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Okay. I love the logic, but no, this is our beloved Facebook. Oh. <laughs> Going in for those young gums. <laughs> Are we sure that wasn't one of Caleb's nicknames? Yeah, exactly. Brando's young like, gums. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, hotter geo, young gums. We've seen them all. <laughs> but that, that, I mean, that does bring up something that I wanted to talk about, which is yeah. the age of this cast. And I, I don't, what is the average age? I haven't actually looked at the numbers compared uh, to like previous seasons. Where's Rob's fact checker? Yeah. I believe someone said that this might average for the youngest cast in history. Okay. Uh, so, and I know that like Ghost Island was very similar here. I'm sure there's stuff from like the teens as well, but yeah, they're definitely up there. So I think both just in the actual numbers, but also just in energy, this cast felt very young. Like even some mm -hmm. of the people who are, if, again, from this cast on the older age range, didn't just still felt super young. So I just get such a young vibe, a young gum vibe, I should say, from this cast in general. So I understand why there were comments about like, because there's always comments about like, oh, where, where are the older people? You yeah. Know. Well, but, at least they're not like Twitter, which is where are the hot people? There were lot of those comments actually in general everywhere that was like where are the hot people for me to look at <laughs> that's like this is totally tangential more mess magnets more of a mess magnets idea i suppose we're like i had seen a meme posted about the announcement that travis kelsey and taylor swift were dating and mm -hmm. it's like oh travis kelsey grabbing sixes on and off the field and it's like you think Taylor Swift is, is a six? <laughs> I think this is less so a repudiation on Survivor and more so like four fingers pointing back at you being like, what is your standard person? Exactly. Like, what do you think people look like? <laughs> I I don't I yeah I don't I don't understand that anyway all right well young gums aside let's move on uh, actually we're gonna stick in the realm of appearances oh. your next comment is fun fact my plastic surgeon was Tarzan on the show I'm so sorry if you <laughs> listen to the talking with T Bird you can understand why I'm issuing this apology my God remember when Tarzan like told Chelsea I think it was either. I know he definitely said that she had gotten a boob job, but I think he also mm -hmm. said that it was like a botched boob job as well. Maybe I'm misremembering that. <laughs> Using his own professional expertise there. Sounds right. Sounds fun right. fact. My plastic surgeon. Yeah, fun fact. Was Tarzan. So this isn't. This is definitely not Twitter. I don't think any. Even the Twitter casuals would like slip in with that mention. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say Instagram for the hell of it. It was Facebook. Wow. Yeah. So I, sh I should have looked at their profile picture. <laughs> I did not. Um, but yes, that just all of a sudden in like a sea of comments that were mostly, and again, this was tough because most of the comments were just like, oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> in the sea of comments, it was like, fun fact, Tarzan was my plastic surgeon. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, where did that come from? Okay. <laughs> all right. Our next comment is, I just want someone's profession to be like an icon a gay guy, an unemployed grifter. Okay, was this Brandon talking about his Breakfast Club alliance where you, they're writing a letter at the end and putting themselves in those base categories? Right. <laughs> a gay guy. That's like the, um, isn't that from Big Brother 6 where Yvette's lower third at one point was she's gay? Yeah, right. Or um, what was the one from The Bachelor? It's like a former child. <laughs> Something like that. Or twin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so they want a lower third to say, icon, gay guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Instagram. Again, I'll keep hitting Instagram until I, I stick. Well, should have tried Twitter because no, that's what really? that comment was from. Yeah, which by the way, who would you match to 
who like who would be the unemployed grifter on this season? <laughs> I mean, Caleb has been in and out of so many jobs, but yeah. we do have two grad students, mm-hmm. which like it's a back and forth as to like technically are you employed? Are you if you're in school, are you unemployed? Like are they technically doing things on the side? I know Drew mm. worked in a call center, so like they could technically be grifters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as, as a grad student that is like so on the head and also not close at all. Like simultaneously, those two things coexist because it's like, yes, you work really hard. Yes, you are employed. Like, yes, you do have a lot of stuff to do, but also you feel that way because you are like a rat constantly looking for free meals. Yeah. And also, yeah. Are are you making money? I think that's the flow chart. It's like, yeah. are you employed? <laughs> exactly. Like, is this a net positive in terms of your total wealth? Let's talk about our next comment, which is, I'll be watching you, Brando and Drew. Uh, Emphasis uh, put on by Liana. I mean, I I can't help but read it that way to a certain extent. (laughs) Now, maybe it's because you put that image in my head of like the Creepo Depot sitting outside of being like, okay, lanky blanky. I'm watching you. (laughs) I'm spying. Glasses, I'm all in. (laughs) I need to put my own glasses in so I can see you from afar. I'm nearsighted. <laughs> All right. I am going to say, let's keep going with Instagram, baby. <laughs> Facebook, God baby. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. I, the most positive interpretation I can have of this is, oh, I'll be watching you. Brando and Drew. But like, <laughs> that better? you could never positively connote that Sean and Julie could say, I'll be watching you. There will be a 15% part of me that is still is like, wow, that's a little creepy. Right. They'll There's be a reason- watching me. The police song, right? There's a reason why people always go back to like, you know, that's like kind of creepy, right? Even though isn't it like about his kid or something? So, well, because anyway. it's a threat and a promise. It's not like a, Ooh. oh, I hope I'll see you do well. It's like, no, no matter how you do, I will be watching you with every ounce of energy. Yes, exactly. I'm watching you. Ooh, that's so scary. Shivers down my spine. It's in time for spooky season. It's spooky season. Well, speaking of spooky... <laughs> No, oh, I don't no. know. Oh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> Your next comment is, I could not be on the same tribe as Jake if I were playing. I would have such a crush, and he seems straight. Has in the first half, not going to lie, uh, of like, oh, my God. I And look at this. Like, uh, not to put, you know, too many stereotypes on things, too many lower third labels, but, like, I think it's very rare that we get the woman obsessively lusting over the man right because didn't she say like i would have such a crush on jake and he's straight well i think i i again did not look at the account but it's and he seems straight which seems like a negative oh interesting i did not take it that way okay yeah i don't know it doesn't matter either way they have a crush on jake and could not be on the same tribe because it would be too distracting wow i mean really taking a page out of matt and franny's book um i'm going to say Instagram. <laughs> the, the yes, that is correct. Yeah! The vanity app, if you will. <laughs> who didn't say who was out there said that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is insanity? Because I just proved that's not the point. Wow, you're doing great. I said Mike. Instagram four times in a row and it finally hit. I'm at the <laughs> casino just rolling dice. Exactly. I <laughs> yeah. Statistically, you're doing exactly how you should be. <laughs> <laughs> if I just flipped a three-sided coin, right. I'd be doing just about as well. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's see if this strategy continues to help you. The next comment is, in all caps, Kendra 8. <laughs> Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. That's the most Twitter thing that's ever Twittered. <laughs> it's Instagram. <laughs> I know. I know. She ate. Wow. She, she made ate. it to Insta. She ate. So I'm Kendra assuming Twitter mother. was all the responses of, oh, she's winning. <laughs> yeah. The the Kendra was positive or negative. Either way, oh, sure. she was one of the people that I could actually find individual comments about. People, oh, yeah. How can you not? Exactly. People had a reaction to her. I don't know, like all over the place reactions, but 
she could be mo the mother, mother, mothering. She's mother. <laughs> she is mother. And just keep saying it. I'm sure it'll eventually stick. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> nope. Okay. Nope. You uh, broke your leg. Like what's her name from the 80s Olympics when you did that? Mary Lou Renhart. Uh, I will say she has, I think, my favorite start to any of these one minute videos mm. where the off camera person asks her like, uh, what's your plan coming to the show? She goes, winging it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like sally please clip that out i think that's so applicable in so many ways especially to our own life circumstances right yeah right now exactly your final comment is from the commercial previews dot 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 i bet kendra is going to be super annoying who smacks their cooch with their shirt tails no no. What? No. <laughs> Why? I can't sleep now. This question will be in my head for the rest of my life. Because who does smack, smack. their cooch with their shirt tails? <laughs> it's a valuable question. But let me clarify. I Okay, let me like mind this out. <laughs> okay. So like. This is the shirt. Yes. I think Kendra's doing like, you know, <laughs> as if, as if like she had tassels on her nipples and her breasts were by the aforementioned cooch. Like, I think it was more so like, woo, and less so mm -hmm. bad, bad, naughty. <laughs> I don't think she's going for that vibe. Like, I didn't even know what that comment meant. Like, I didn't even equate that to what they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, because I, I think it's the shot just... of, yeah, of everyone getting pumped. And there was a commercial where, like, all of yeah. Bella was going, like, absolutely bananas. Like, Applebee's already got announced for a reward. And she was doing, mm. like, this with the little tails at the end of her shirt. That, if you, I guess, if you don't have good depth perception, could be perceived as some sort of vaginal abuse. I suppose so. I had no idea. Anyway, what do you think this comment was from? Which social media site? Whoever it is, I'm blocking them instantaneously. Mm. I'm going to find that profile. Mm -hmm. I will go with... No, I can't. I'm not going to pry further. I feel like that'd be cheating to be like, okay, is this a response to a specific video? Mm. Um, I am going to go with Facebook. That is correct. Of course. Listen. <laughs> I thought the dot 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 might give it away. That's like a classic. Oh, Facebook they love comment. the ellipses. <laughs> yeah. Big ellipses fans. Yes. That was on, on Facebook. In fact, that same comment was on multiple videos. Like, I don't know if the person oh! like, copy and pasted it onto <laughs> multiple videos because they look really needed this. Does point anyone else seen. notice this? There's clearly <laughs> some harm happening. Please tell me someone else is seeing what I'm seeing. Is there a chance that Kendra actually did do that? And she bruised herself out of the game by bruising herself. Bruised, <laughs> bruised herself. Uh, yeah, it's our first medivac uh, of the season. <laughs> it would be, with no offense to a different bruise, the funniest reason that anyone has ever been medivaced in Survivor history. Like, screw not being able to poop. If you hurt your vagina so much because you hit it with your shirt in celebration... Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah, well, vaginas are they're pretty resilient. So I think uh I, I think imagine she'll be so, okay. yeah. <laughs> and she's wearing anyway. it through a layer of clothing. Like I think the pants took on the brunt of the blunt force yeah. trauma. <laughs> Like, honestly, that's probably of minimal concern for vagina-having contestants. Like, you're way yeah. more likely to get a UTI. So just, you know. All right. Well, Mike, congratulations. You did slightly better than the statistics would say. Yeah. You got four correct. That's like my uh, Austin. No, my, my Brando, right? 50% of the time, I'm doing better than the average. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, to finish things off, each and every week, we on the b, &B like to uh, pull the curtain on the silliness a bit and draw the spotlight onto a charity or cause that is important to all the silliness we have going on here on the podcast. If it's all right with you, Liana, mm -hmm. I would love to draw attention to one particular thing. Now, of course, since the last time we have gone together talking about Survivor, we have seen the industry-wide strikes that have been happening with both the WGA and SAG-AFTRA. At the time we were talking 
about this. Uh, there are approaches to perhaps a final negotiation happening between the WGA and the AMPTP. But obviously, there are these people who have put their blood, sweat, and tears, much like Survivor players, into their life's work only to have their rights be continuously cut down over the past few years that has finally reached this breaking point and produced these understandable and deserved strikes for their rights. So that has also left them a bit out of pocket. They are the grifters in the lower third that that casual wants. So you can help contribute to the entertainment community fund if you'd like to, which provides uh, essentially a big fund for all of these performers, all of these writers to pull from for basic living expenses. Because again, they are being deprived of this income to secure rights for themselves and for the people that should come after them. If you go to entertainmentcommunity.org, you see a big purple donate button in the corner to click. Any donation is, of course, greatly appreciated. Fingers crossed we are reaching the end of this strike for everyone who is involved. But in case that does not happen anytime soon, give them the opportunity to be able to like afford living from day to day mm -hmm. while they are pursuing a, a very understandable future for themselves. Yes, we at the BNB support workers' rights. Yes, we're pro union. Pro union. We may abuse the people who stay at the BNB, <laughs> but the workers we support. <laughs> so, um, yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. I echo everything um, that that Mike said, and I'm just actually so happy to see more groups. Um, we've had the car workers union mm -hmm. also no um, strike, and that just warms my heart. So, fight for what you deserve. Well, I think our hearts are sufficiently warmed at this point, and it's not all the wings I've been eating because I've been winging it. I'm ready to get into 45. Uh, I think between the preseason interviews, getting to know this cast, seeing people's reactions to said cast, and especially on a getting to talk with you again and truly rev up this weekly bout of Survivor shenanigans, I think I'm ready. I know that the song back in season 40 to told us you better be ready. I am unnamed person in the song. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I forgot about that. I, they should bring that back. Now, that the thing is, yeah, I guess it's yeah. a lot more expensive to like hire Give Me Shelter, you know, pay out of the Rolling Stones catalog. But it was See? season 45 where, again, they put giant buffs on monuments and did a drone show with a QR code for a YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, going all out in certain ways. And uh, I echo that. You better be ready. Survivor's right around the corner. I'm I'm really looking forward to the 90-minute episodes. I know we didn't yeah. really touch on that much. It's been a big headline. But I'm hoping that it does allow for us to get more of these interesting people that are on TV, more interesting moments, seeing them interact and, and have a emphasis on that, not so much the advantages. But we'll see. It's interesting because... Uh... Much like we talked about with The Amazing Race, where they ended up actually pulling a Koran Cambodia swap seasons mm -hmm. because if for this upcoming season 35, they had gained the knowledge that they wanted to do 90 minute episodes in the fall and produced a season specifically around that. Jeff has expressed that they were told that the that CBS won in 90 minute episodes before making this season. Good. And so I do think this season will be made with that in mind. To your point, that <laughs> might mean they decide to create, okay, we've got a little more room in the house. Let's build another advantage wall, essentially. Mm -hmm. Let's knock this piece down and build something in to make up for that time. I do know, regardless, we're getting those opening credits back, baby, which yeah. is so exciting. It's something small, but between like that and the pressure cooker and the key wheel from Big Brother, these are little things in comparison to like some of the larger systemic things that I know mm -hmm. fans want to change, but like, it's nice to have return sometimes. I think that's one reason why people are, again, a little in and out with the format of the new era is because like, you don't, you can't miss something when it's always around. Mm -hmm. And so not having the intro around pretty much since like winners at war, I think, which had it for a couple episodes and that's it to get it back in all of its resplendent slow motion format, I'm so excited for. And also just for the players, knowing that there's so yeah. many big fans of the show that like that would make me feel really good. So I'm excited for yeah. them. Yeah, so excited for them, excited for us as we get to check it out. Of course, it all kicks off 90 minutes on Wednesday, September 27th. And then that weekend and every weekend, Liana and I will be back playing some Survivor games and doing usual silly segments with a guest or perhaps 
guests, as is the case with this first week. Next weekend, we're going to be talking the premiere of Survivor 45 with a duo that are currently in the weeds talking about Love is Blind, the most recent season that dropped. They're coming on to a very different pod to talk Survivor. Asia Welch and Frail Mary Kwiatkowski are going to come on to talk about what should be a very interesting premiere from a very interesting cast. Also on Wednesday, September 27th, Liana, another show that you are covering this fall, will be premiering. What do you have to plug from that? Yes. So I have been so, so busy with work. And I am finally now starting to emerge from under the rock that I've been living under. And thank God the timing is working out because Survivor, Mass Singer, and Lego Masters are all coming oh. back. So I'm going to be doing coverage, weekly coverage for Mass Singer. Puya and I are going to be getting together to talk about everything. There was like some episode like two weeks ago or something. Yes. I don't know. Whatever. We're going to figure that out later. Uh, so that we're going to be doing. And then also uh, my sister and I are going to be doing Lego Masters. We're going to keep the same coverage schedule we've done in previous years where we do the premiere and then we do every sort of three episodes. So every two, three, four, five, six, seven episodes. Um, so you can look out for that from me. Nice. And you can follow everything I'm doing at a Mike Bloom type. And it is a lot. As was mentioned before, nine plus hours of podcast interviews uh, where I played them over with Rob, gave our thoughts about it in the moment. If you just want those interviews proper, those are also available on RHAP's YouTube channel. They're about like an hour and a half to two hours each if you want to cram before you're doing a draft of your own like Liana or just getting ready. I have written versions of those interviews up at parade.com as well, as well as a really special piece. I had the immense pleasure of writing where I got the chance to go onto the set of Survivor earlier this year. And while I was there, look, we are in the midst of a new era. And so I found it prominent to talk with all of the, the next generation of crew members in a manner of speaking, the people that have come on as dream teamers, you know, recruited through others, what have you, and have risen through the ranks in various ways and are responsible for some of the chief most things that happen on Survivor that you may not know about. I think understandably, we look at Jeff as sort of like the man responsible for everything. And I think he is to a certain extent. But if you just turn the camera around slightly, you can see hundreds upon hundreds of people putting in their own blood, sweat, and tears every day to try to make the best show possible. I had the chance to talk with seven of those. I've received such great compliments from that article. So if you're into behind the scenes stuff from Survivor Production, really encourage you to check that out. I do have, as I mentioned, one more piece before 45 comes out. I'll have an interview with Jeff talking about his thoughts in preparing 45 and uh, you know handling that season, especially coming out of 44. Should also have a talk with Jeff following the premiere of 45. And then we get into the usual Misha Goss. Uh, we're going to have exit interviews for Survivor, as well as exit interviews for Amazing Race, as well as, you know, oncoming and ongoing exit interviews for Big Brother, as well as ongoing interviews for The Challenge USA. This has really felt like a warm up for me, where now I've been like maintaining a good jog. Now it's a sprint. We are hitting the end of September. Amazing Race and Survivor are coming back. I am very grateful to many fans' consternation that Big Brother 25 essentially took a week off because I don't know how I would handle the onboarding of these two shows, but should have coverage of that. Uh, Rob, Jess, and I will be back covering The Amazing Race as well. Those should be in your feed, I believe, Wednesday nights, Thursdays as well. So a lot is happening. I'm on Cameo as well if you want my extended thoughts about any of these for me to rate your draft or fantasy team or for me to just wear a silly costume and make mouth sounds like Jeff will ask of the contestants in a future season. Cameo.com slash a Mike Bloom type is my handle. So check it out. If you want to throw some bones my way, I'll dress up like a skeleton. Speaking of bones. Sure. Why the hell not? Regardless, I'm very excited for what's to come. Liana, this is going to be an incredibly fun time. We always like to say this, no matter what the quality of the season you and I are able to mine gold out of like even the most uh, barren lands. And so not to prognosticate that for 45, but no matter what shenanigans ensue, yeah. we'll have shenanigans talking about said shenanigans. Exactly. Um, I've I've decided that I'm going to make you dress up as David S. Pumpkins, I think is going to be my next thing for you for cameo. So okay. uh, 
Yeah, I'm going to put that request in later. <laughs> well, I will not have any questions about that because you have just given me the answer. So if you have games that you want to send us, we are incredibly receptive to games that people send us or segment suggestion ideas throughout the season. If you have a couple of ways you can do that, you can email us, rhapbnb at gmail.com. That's rhap, the letter B, the letter N, the letter B, at gmail.com. You can also, on social media, use the hashtag rhap. B and B as well. Seriously, Liad and I have to come up with games each and every week. We are incredibly accepting of anything you might send us. No idea is too stupid. I send that with every emphasis on the syllable as if I'm Liana reading off a casual comment about watching specific contestants. <laughs> we are watching you. I think that's the other thing too, is like, even if you throw out an idea that can spawn another idea too for us. So it just helps to have more, more creative input, the better. Absolutely. So next week we will be watching Survivor 45's premiere and breaking it all down with Asia and Mary. Thank you all so much for listening. Liana, it is so great to be back. So excited for another fall of b, &B nonsense. Much, much more to come. Until next time, everybody, we'll check you out at your next day.